This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, January the 9th, 2019. Today is the birthday of the Pope who canonized five of the greatest saints in history on the same day. Pope Gregory the 15th was born in 1554 today in Bologna and was slowly rose up the ranks of the church bureaucracy. He was devout and attentive and generally considered a good pope, but not poised to do anything historically significant until March 12, 1622, when he raised to the dignity of the altar at a single mass Ignatius of Loyola and Francis Xavier, co-founders of the Jesuit order, Teresa of Avila, foundress of the Discalced Carmelites, Philip Neri, who established the oratories that bear his name, and Isidore the Worker, not to be confused with Isidore of Seville, after whom he was named. Three founders of religious orders still operating today 400 years later. That was a serious mass. Pope Gregory also established the Congregation for the Propagation of the Faith and reformed papal elections to require secret ballots. But none of his accomplishments would compare to March the 12th, 1622. Today is also the birthday of Jose Maria Escreva, who founded a new kind of religious order, which was meant for lay people living in the world with families and jobs. At a retreat in 1928, the Spanish priest Jose Maria was concerned that too many people considered holiness reserved somehow for priests and monks and nuns only. And he needed a way to teach the mothers and fathers and widows of the world to sanctify themselves by work and prayer and moral living in their daily lives. It took him 20 years to get Opus Dei, a name that meant the work of God, up and running. It's a simple, clear method of prayer and sacrifice and study and moral absolutes that has changed the lives of millions of people in the last 90 years. Even to this day, many people in the church and outside of the church are resentful of what St. Jose Maria Escreva simply referred to as the way of holiness. And usually those kinds of people have negative things to say about Opus Dei because they enter the organization with ambitions of leadership and innovation, and they leave angry that they have not unseated Father Jose Maria Escreva as the instructor and the primary voice. Escriva died in 1975, and the soon-to-be Pope John Paul I praised him for his contribution to Christian spirituality. Finally today, for better or worse, Steve Jobs generally and literally changed the world and the way we interact with one another when he introduced the iPhone. But the device which Jobs touted as three devices in one, a phone, a music player, and an internet device, would go on to launch a revolution in personal computing and be constantly connected. Before iPhone, texting was limited for flip phone users. Internet connectivity was slow and expensive because there was little need for anything other than checking email. Online music and video was almost all done by downloading. iPhone created the world of mass texting, fast connections, streaming content on the mobile platform, and a subscription model as a viable way to sell media to mobile users. Jobs had already changed music with his iPod and personal computing with his iMac, but no accomplishment in his life is likely to outweigh the effect of the little device that he introduced to the world today in 2007. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.